So we're having a great time right now on the red carpet, talking to all of our favorite celebrities. And our producer, Jamal Finkley, just decided to join us. And we want to hear what are your thoughts for Best Picture? Let us know. Well, my first thoughts is like, aren't y'all looking amazing oh on the God. carpet? <laughs> I'm so excited for you hosting this year's SAG and for Nicole joining us. I mean, it's a great year from films, yes. you know, this year. So Best Picture, there's a lot of great uh, nominees, uh, hidden figures. Fences, yes. Moonlight, uh, Moonlight Captain Fantastic, uh, is it Arrival? A like Manchester. Manchester by the Sea. Right. Manchester, Manchester by, by the, the sea. sea. So you have a lot of firepower in there. A lot of people that's going to be that are nominated for for Best Actor or Best Supporting Actor, and all that stuff kind of makes a Best Picture when you have all the elements. You got the writers nominated, directors nominated, you know. So. It's gonna be a tough matchup. I mean, but I mean, who are y'all favorites first? Was... I'm rooting for Moonlight too, simply because the cast. It's not one of their first roles in Hollywood, so it's like fresh talent taking over this year. Um, I'm going with for Best Picture Moonlight. Although I will say, I thought La La Land was incredible, and so I was surprised to not see it nominated tonight. But um, I'm going with Moonlight. I think the cast was incredible, and to have a young acting cast and have them deliver that the way they they did, I think they truly deserve the recognition. Uh, so we're excited to see who wins Best Picture. Let us know what you think. Black Tree TV, stay tuned. Connecticut. How are you? Good, how are you? You are your I'm mom's good. twin. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay, so one, I'm so proud of you because I think as a young black woman, you always speak up about issues that are very important and that's, that's gonna be important for your future. Thank you so much. Can you address, I know you just released a statement and you had something to say about the Muslim ban because of your diversity. Can you just address that? Uh, well, I basically was just saying that it's important that we don't just take this lightheartedly and it's important that we really examine the effects of this and where 
um, our stance on immigration has gotten us. Because we are a country founded by immigrants, because we've been open to immigrants coming here before, we have reaped the benefits of their work, their community, their love. I am a part of their love. Um, I am a result of their love. And I mean, as somebody who is first generation American on my father's side, I want to make sure that we understand that these are real people that are being stuck in this airport and real people that are being affected by this. And it's more than just one of like Trump's million of things that he does. I have to ask, you know, we're here, we're celebrating. Yes. Is it hard to yes. celebrate moments? It's moments? very hard. I wanted to skip press and honestly it's very hard to be here tonight. Uh, I'm the grandchild of refugees and I'm the child of civil rights activists and very, very painful to have to get your head around this and I'm honored to be nominated and my address is great, but I'd rather be on the floor of LAX right now possibly getting myself arrested because it's going to take more than liking things on Facebook to turn this ship around. So we've got a long fight ahead of us. Well, we're right with you. Thank you. You have a good night. Thank you. And you know, what I love about Moonlight is it didn't matter your sexuality. I think the story was overall relatable. Can you speak to why you chose to be a part of this film? What was it about the script that really? Yeah, I mean, it was a story, as you said. You know, so much love and compassion in it. And, you know, it was a page turner. It was, it was an impossible to say no to, truly. And so much hope as well, you know, it really shows. And also, I think it was a, a film that brilliantly reminds us about our shared humanity. And we didn't know when we were making it that it would be as important it is, as it is now. We need that message now more than ever. And Naomi, your character, we saw her at different stages. And it, and it was tough. We got to see how she got into addiction and then that recovery phase. So what was that process like preparing for um, it was really difficult. Um, it was really hard to find Paula because I don't have any personal experience of addiction. So it was a matter of using my imagination and also doing a tremendous amount of research, you know, uh, and also talking to people with addiction and finding out about a, Paula's backstory as well. But then I obviously shot it in only three days and I was jumping backwards and forwards between the time periods. So it certainly was not easy. <laughs> 
know that the three days. Now, last question, Andre, can you talk about the significance of that last season? Oh, man. To me, it was, you know, Kevin's a guy who, who comes to a place where he, he realizes that he's done something wrong and he wants a second chance. He wants to apologize. And I think it says a lot about who he is, about his humanity, that he would reach out and he would follow through. And I think there's a real intimacy and a compassion. And it's beautiful to see this character, Chiron, receive compassion for, you know, one of the very few times in his life. So I think that's really important that we have that image out there, especially today. Well, incredible job. Thank you. Thank you. everything, but Thank best picture, so hands down. So I look Thank forward you. to tweeting about that. I've been looking for you. Really? Because you I found I, me. I love you. You are my natural hair inspiration. Look, my, my hair got so long. Ooh, look at this. It just got so long. You know what? I I thought really hard last night and I woke up today and it was so long. <laughs> it's beautiful. Now you know I want to ask you because you're definitely outspoken about issues that we're dealing with in the world. And I know this recent Muslim ban personally affects Yara because her dad is Iranian and she it, connects it, a lot. it affects a lot of people personally and all of us because we're all Americans what where do we go from here what do we do I don't know I don't know I don't know the answers to anything I really don't um, I think where we go is that we support each other we stand up we use our voices and we make sure that those organizations that know how to support us have funding uh, the ACLU, thank you, ACLU, for doing what you did, um, and they're going to continue to have to fight. And now, can you give us the inside scoop on this on this blackish kind of spinoff? Oh Yara? no, we have no inside scoop yet, except for that it's coming, and we're excited. I'm so excited. I went to Spelman, so I'm like, this could give us like a different. Yeah, world. no, exactly, a new generation of a different world. I know we're really excited. It's perfect. It's ideal. It's like it's awesome. We're excited, but we we know nothing. We know nothing. Well, we'll say updates. Thank you.
Hi. Okay. Huge fan of the night of. It started out, we were so worried about did Nas do it, did Nas do it, and it ended up being this film about how the criminal justice system ruins families. Talk about kind of the importance of this. Well, if you don't have money, you can't make bail. That's the first thing. Uh, you know? And also, if you're there for a long time and the people aren't ready to go to trial, that doesn't, time, that doesn't count as time served when you're in Rikers. And so that was just the beginning of it. And he can fill you in on the rest. Well, yeah, I mean, sadly, we don't all have equal access to justice, you know, depending on where you are arrested, what neighborhood you're from, whether you can afford a lawyer, all that kind of stuff. We don't all have equal access to justice. So I'm really proud, actually, that this show touched on a lot of these issues as part of our reality. And I just think the role of art is to engage with and interrogate our reality. You're both nominated, so good luck. Thank you. Pleasure. You look beautiful. Oh, thank you. You too. Thank you. Westworld. It has. It's the talk of the town. Everyone is talking about Westworld. What do you think it is about the show that's resonating? I think it's a show that is not at all traditional. It is everything outside the box, and it challenges the way that you think. It, it think about life, think about relationships, think about people, and think about where we're going in society and technology. What, what can we expect for the next season? Give us something. Give us something. I don't know. I promise. I have no idea. Well, there you have it. I'm sorry. I have. I really don't know. No, it's okay. We look forward to seeing. Hi. How you doing? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. And you have the lovely accent to join us. Yeah. Hell oh. oh, yeah. Cockney. <laughs> so Game of Thrones. People are die-hard yeah. fans for Game of Thrones. What's the craziest fan experience? You do you know what? I haven't really had a lot of uh, crazy experiences. I've had some weird and appropriate questions asked sometimes, but I did get mistaken for, uh, a lot of the times I get mistaken for Joffrey. I was going to say. <laughs> which, I mean, I'll take that as a compliment as much as you like, but that's a bit weird. Yeah. And now you play the king, so if you were the king today in reality, right? If you were the king of this world, mm -hmm. what is something that would be important for you in your I mean, I'd, I'd, I'd take away all the hate and like violence in the world. Obviously, keep Game of Thrones in the world. You need to watch have things like Game of Thrones, but I'd, I'd just absolutely spread love. You know, give everyone loads of money and just relax and enjoy it life instead of worrying about silly things. 
And as a fan, I want to know, is Khaleesi and John, are they going to find out that they're related? Are they going to find out? I don't know. I hope so. <laughs> I mean, I do know some spoilers for season seven. Okay. But I can't say I'd get assassinated if I did. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, Jason. Jaleesa. Jaleesa, how you feeling? Good, good. Nice to meet you. Nice meeting you. We were just saying, we said blue is clearly the colorful you know black saying? man on the carpet You tonight. can't see the brother back here rocking the serious <laughs> blue. I'm in the dark blue. He's in the blue! <laughs> yes. It's like so everybody knows. Looking good. Now, I know you're involved with the sag after committee. Yes. You're the chair of the diversity committee. Yes. And I think people, we've been really pleased. There's been a lot of diversity this year. We have so many look, black films being nominated. Just look, talk to us it, it, it is my little area of gospel that I preach is that, you know, it, it, look, people, it's not inherently racist. It's not inherently prejudiced. But the reality is we all have a natural bias that we only know our own story. And you don't think about other people's story because it's not your story. Um, and so our, my job has been to go around and say, listen, your writer's room, your studio, your network will be better if you get people of diverse ideas, people come from diverse backgrounds, because they'll beat the idea up a little bit more. You know, Barack Obama's whole presidency was based on the idea of a team of rivals, people who disagree and beat it up, people come from different cultures to beat up the ideas and expose the world to something new, you know, and uh, I mean, look, TV and film shows the world what it can be, you know, and it can also show the world what it's in danger of becoming. And so, you know, that's all an artist has is their point of view. And so, to, you know, you're going to have artists in here expressing their points of view tonight, so I guarantee you, you give an artist a mic and people are going to be talking about some things because it's been interesting in the country of late. So I'm just excited as the chair of the Diversity Advisory Committee that I've been trying to explain to people that diversity makes money. You know, the, the, the films with the highest return on their investment are at least 50% minority. Because if you have a good story, first off, it's got to be good. Don't bring no garbage around here. It's got to be good. But once it's good and you, show, you put, you know, some black folks in it, some Latinos in it, some you know women in it. So, so you, you stack these audiences, and everybody sees a little bit of themselves. They're more apt to watch. Yeah. They're more apt to watch when they see a little bit of themselves in there. And the, Hollywood's been listening a little, a little bit, a little bit. SAG after has always quietly gotten it, gotten it right because we have a membership that's incredibly diverse. We have a membership that's hungry to see themselves on the screen, partially because they want a job. You know what I mean? Brother trying to get a job, which means there'll be a black face on that screen. Um, so we have membership that's always reaching out and trying to put that message out there and I've been blessed enough to kind of be at the forefront of trying to get that message out there and the result is we have some phenomenal nominees, I mean Fences, uh, Hidden Figures, I mean you know Mo Moonlight is off the chain. Nobody's told that story. Yes. Nobody's told that story yet and, and it's so specific but you see it and you just go, you don't have to be gay, you don't have to be black, anybody who's ever felt like an outsider for a heartbeat can recognize how that felt can recognize how that felt and that by being so human it becomes universal so specifically black gay man and in, in, in my it's like you un, it becomes this universal thing where you're like that's not my story but i get it exactly i get it and the power of the performances it's like that one was off the chain no it was all amazing and we're looking forward to see tonight Who yeah wins? it's gonna be it's, 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 it's gonna it's, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing that's gonna be look the voting's hard this year I, I honestly don't remember it being this hard before where there's such a it's like an embarrassment of riches so it's a good year it's right. a good year thank you jason
first of all, incredible. Thank you so much. Incredible, Thank emotional you. performance. Thank you. Um, hands down, probably my favorite film. Yes, yeah. yes, that happened this year. Thank you so Talk much. Talk a little bit about um, how you became a part of this role and, and if you anticipated this recognition. Yeah, well, um, I mean, I think I initially signed on to the script because I fell in love with the project uh, and just the people that I will be working with, you know. This is a really important uh, story to tell, especially living in such a progressive society right now. So I feel like as an artist, it was my duty to be a part of something like this and to play a character that's uh, so universal or so uh, swept under the rug almost. Um, yeah, totally. Yes, no, you're ready. And what about with the other actors, right, who, play, who played Sharon as well, who played his other characters? You all have very similar mannerisms. Yeah. Did you practice? Did you all work together? Uh, we, we actually did not see each other on set, man. Yeah, so my, my first time seeing them, I think, would have had to been at the Toronto Film Festival. But uh, no, we did not see each other at all. We each had two weeks to film. Um, and did what we had to do, you know, the script gave a lot and the direction was so spot on and so good. I think when you have great artists and a great team of people working together, then you could pull off something so magical like the portrayals of Chiron, man. So, yeah, that was super dope to be a part of, for sure. Oh, incredible job. Thank you so much. Truly. It was a great film, so I'm excited for you all. For real. Have a good night. Yes. Incredible. Thank you. True Black story. Yes. I think so many people can relate to Troy. Everyone has some type of Troy in their life. But how did you necessarily connect to your character? Uh, I am my character. You know, I grew up without a father. Uh, I grew up with, without a, a father figure, about a man in my life. And so you, all you want to do, there's a sense of longing, you know, to, to, because you want your father to come some way into your life. All he says was, Dad, come see me play. Now, you can apply that to get Dad come to my Cub Scout meeting, come to my football game, you know what I mean? Come up to go, come see my plays, whatever it is. You want somebody to love you. And I think that's what my character, Lions, was looking for, just the love. And I think as black men as, of that age, of that time, we didn't know that that's what it was that we were missing, was love. We didn't know how to articulate it, you know? And I think, and what we do is, we mask the pain through other things, right? Uh, through other vices and certain the way we act, how we treat our women, how we mistreat our women, you know, that's evident as well. And so I think what, what this is, is a healing. It's an opportunity to learn from our mistakes and learn from our past. And for men to take an opportunity to, to learn how to communicate uh, with each other, communicate uh, with their spouses, but also unearth some of that pain that's inside you and dig deeper and evolve. Good to see you, Nice Julissa. to meet you. You're looking good. All Thank right. you. Good. Thank you. Now I hear, are you expecting a child this year? Uh -huh. Yes. How are, you, are you ready for father? It's weeks away. I better be. Oh, yeah. baby's almost here. Do you know what you're having? Uh, we do. You sharing it? I'm not breaking that news yet. <laughs> all right. Now you're nominated. You're, you're, you're a part of two nominated films, Hidden Figures and Moonlight, both incredible. Talk about that importance of black representation. Um, I just think it's important for us to to be a part of great projects, you know, um, and to give writers an opportunity to sort of enfranchise people from the standpoint of of what they connect to, you know, and stop deciding for people this is what we want to see, and 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 really take a real interest in people's own personal experiences. So if you look at Moonlight, you have a story that would be very difficult to greenlight otherwise, otherwise, but. A24 recognized that, recognized that as a deeply personal story of Terrell Alva McCraney's and gave Barry and Terrell the means to be able to shoot that project. And as a result, you see that people have really responded to that. So I think that there is, there is an opportunity to, because of the success of, of Moonlight and Hidden Figures, Hidden Figures just making $100 million, which is amazing, is to look for these stories that, that people kind of outside of the studio realm want to uh, want to see made you know and um and happy to be a part of it well, we're happy for you thank we'll you love everything, but you the queen know. is is in atlanta doing black panther yes. so i'm representing yes I'm you, re representing. you representing tonight now right. let's talk about people versus oj okay you in, you were incredible how did you prepare you clearly became your character how did you prepare for that you know i i i said <laughs> I didn't want to watch footage because I thought I would be intimidated because he had a, a very big life. 
and that was intimidating to me. Uh, I didn't know him, I had met him, but I didn't know him, but I was kind of scared. So I said, I'm just going to read uh, Jeffrey Tubin's book, maybe one or two other books, and get uh, a, a kernel, um, because I know we're going to be working fast. So it, uh, all I needed was something to, to get me back in line if I got off track. Mm -hmm. And I found it, and I said, let's go. And I, that's what I did. And I, because I said, the scripts are great, and if, uh, if I miss something, mm -hmm. I think the audience will forgive me if I just help them enter into the story. And that's what happened. And I, last question, but you and your wife are definitely, I think, an example for younger black people of, of just a black love, of what we aspire to have. I, I think watching you two, it, it's not a Hollywood couple. You are a genuine black My couple. Girl. What is the key to kind of having that longevity in your relationship? Have your back. Have each other's back. And don't, I, 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 I generally, when we come to these functions, She's out front, and I like her to be out front. I'm not, I'm not competing with her. She, I want her to have the best. She needs an Oscar. Mm -hmm. That's my fight, to get her her Oscar and to get her her Emmy. That's what I want. And if something happens for me in, the, in my push for her, thank you, Lord, but my push is her. And when she sees me pushing for her, when it comes around for me, she's pushing for me. That's how it works. Hey now, hey now. How are you doing? I'm great. I feel great. You're bringing a little bit of the, of the sexiness here. Girl, you know, I'm a nasty woman. That's right. Come on. That's right. I don't bathe in Cheeto dust. That's right. Okay? Let's Ashley Judd in the streets. Let's talk about it. Now, on, on that note, since you kind of brought it up, your blackish co-star Yara, she's half Iranian, yes, and you know is. we just had this Muslim ban. Absolutely. Talk, talk about I want people to go to the airports. I want people to go any and everywhere they can to protest what is going on right now. Literally, the Klan is in the White House. Okay, we fell asleep. America became complacent. Well, now you've got to stand up. If you don't want to insult, you got to stand up if you don't want to insult the ancestors who took the ropes, the whips, the gas chambers, the boats. We don't get to sit down now. This is when you are defined. In this hour, what are you going to do now that we fell asleep? Because we fell asleep, ladies and gentlemen. So it's time to what the kids said, stay woke. Thank you. Thank you. I just wrote a song called 50 Million of Us. We'll march down south and we will tear down that wall. Okay? 100 million of us. 300 million of us will do what we have to to keep all people free. Yes, I am loving the pen right here. Oh, we you know what it is. You know I'm, what I'm from is. Harlem. So. Oh, are you? We're coming down here from Brooklyn. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. New yeah. York love, New York all love. All day, all now, day. Now, speaking of Harlem, let's talk about Luke Cage. Luke Cage is hot. How incredible is it? Hey, Tell it. I, I showed up, did my thing, and, and broke out, you know? Now, is it different from, I mean, it's Marvel. We're dealing yeah. with a superhero. Is, is the set, is that something different? Is that a different experience than, like, your work that you're doing on Stranger Things? Well, totally different characters, yeah. Um, one is a, a world of, like, imagination comic book. You know, you have room to play. 
Uh, this one is more like a nostalgic feel of 1984. So you got to be a little more specific, you know, for Stranger Things. Does that make sense? No, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Now, we have a lot of diversity. Black people are being celebrated this yes. year for all that we're bringing to TV yes. and to film. Yes. Do you have any uh, favorite movies or shows that you watch this year? My favorite movie of all time um, is probably Quest for Fire, <laughs> which, which is uh, literally about the quest for fire. And then Beat Street, of course. You know, Beat Street's my thing. Uh, Cooley High, of course. Yes, you know, of course. Anything Love this year? What about the movies being nominated? We got Hidden Figures. This year, uh, I enjoyed Hidden Figures. I enjoyed Fences. I it loved Moonlight. Uh, Lion, though, was really, like, affected me the most out of everything I watched. Lion just blew me away. You know, uh, the story, the, the connectedness to it all. Um, I loved, uh, after that, uh, what else did I get into? Uh, what did I mention them? All? I mean, that's all of them. That's yeah, all of them. Yeah, we got yeah, it right here. Year, there know? you have it. People have to support Stranger Things. Wow. Stranger Things, no doubt. Yes. You know, that's what we're here for tonight. Yes, pleasure to meet you. Oh, my pleasure, Julissa. Yes, have right. a good day. You too. I'm good. How are you? You're way taller than I thought. You guys are growing, right? <laughs> Do you have the heels? That's how the girls cheat. I hate it. <laughs> I feel so tall until I get to these award shows. Now, Modern Family, you've grown with this show. So, talk about how has your personal life? How have you used that to kind of shape your character? Yeah, I think I think they really um, in uh, kind of like my teenage years start to like base the character off of me, you know. And like Nolan, what are you going through? And I'm like. Well, you know, like, growing up sucks. I'm like, this all what's going on. And then it would crazy, it would be cool to, like, see those storylines come up for Luke, you know, where he's dealing with, like, girl, girl trouble and, like, all that. Perfect. Thank you, Nolan. Thank you. And uh, we look forward to seeing Modern Family. I want Ty to win. It's time. Oh, me too. That guy, he's so, he's so amazing. He's incredible. He's hilarious. That guy, it's one of the funniest. The funniest in person, too. Oh, okay. He's amazing. It's amazing just being with them. We all know it's the best picture. I mean, I mean, hey, I mean, I mean, I mean hey. Uh, I if don't we get best say picture, that, you know, we're going to be excited. But you already know we grinding, so we're we going to get it. Right uh, it's, it's, been, it's been incredible, and it's an incredible process. And, you know, a year ago, we didn't think, you know, we'd be here. And it's amazing to see how much love that we, you know, we've been spreading out and it's being reciprocated. And it's amazing that a story like this today and a time like this can be so loved and so important and at the top and um it just feels amazing to know that we put our hearts and souls into this project you know like we really did and it's paying off and it's good you know what i loved about it was in each stage of Chiron's life even though you all are three different actors you had similar mannerisms it was weird it was we like we didn't meet before uh, i met these dudes like at like yeah. like five months ago we didn't even meet during filming which is incredible 
Uh, honestly, it was just trusting in Barry, trusting in the script. It's just a magic trick, to be quite honest. This little man did his thing. This, this little man this is the dude. did his thing. This man did his thing. Everybody did their things, man. That's all it was. We just trusted in Barry and trusted in the script and gave her all. Well, we're so proud of you. Thank you so much. Seeing all this black brotherhood and great. Pride and love. Yes. Look at you little. Thank you. Just like. Yes. Y'all did a wonderful job. These are my bodyguards. These are my bodyguards. You know he was going to grab you. Black. Mm-hmm. What's up? No. You're nominated tonight. We're really proud of you. But we have to ask you about this Muslim ban because we know Yara has made a statement about it. She's addressed it. What's going on? Uh, a, a lot of different things are going on in our world right now. Um, you know, Yara is Muslim, uh, but you know we should we should, we should be living in a society of acceptance and of love. That's my stance on it. Yeah, and I think it's unfortunate what's what's going on right now. And Tracy won the Golden Globe. We're so excited for her. Is Blackish getting the recognition that it deserves? I believe so. I, b I believe so. Hold on one second. Is Blackish getting the recognition it deserves? Yeah, it's amazing. I watched I mean, almost every episode. But yeah, it's getting the recognition. All right. Well, we love it, Anthony. Uh, thank you love very what much. you're doing. Scooping you right back up. How you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm good. good. So Orange is the new black one last year. Are you guys going to do two in Well, no, I can't be the one that, that answers that. We have a whole bunch of fans that will and, and colleagues that will answer that question. But I, I, I hope that, you know, over everything, people will continue to see that what we talk about is important and it resonates, uh, not just in our country, but on a larger worldly platform. That's what's most important to me. Have you guys begun uh, filming for the news? We've already finished. Really? Any previews? Uh, it's good. <laughs> well, tell, talk good. about your character, her, her, her growth. What are we going to see? Well, you know, Cindy's always up to something, so you'll see what what new antics she's up to this season for sure. Oh, we look forward to it. Thank you. Thank you, Adrian. Hi, hello. How you doing? You're looking good, bro. I'm doing. I'm, 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 love, so I'm loving it. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, it's so you know simple today. Simple, simple, easy, black. It's so much to talk about with you. Hidden figures. This black women empowerment. We have, we have, we have this moment. Talk. Yeah. Just talk to us about the film. I mean, I love the way that uh, the nation has kind of grasped onto it because. It debunks so many stereotypes that people try to put up before. The fact that women can't lead films, the fact that black people can't lead films, the fact that films about education can't cross over to the commercial world. Um, I love that it opens up doors for opportunities, but then it also exposes the nation to the idea of hope and what we can be when we look past fears and all that. And then also for you know, looking at just positive stories about black culture, black Americans, uplifting our black women the way that they need to, supporting them the way they need to. Women in general, the way women need to be supported today. I love that it's a representation of that. I mean, it's 2017, there is no reason why we should be having conversations of, you know, should we or should we not, you know, have equal rights for women. That makes no sense. It's not a question. Yes, it should, everything should be equal. Why are we having that conversation? So I think it came out at the perfect time. And I want to ask you about Underground because, you know, there's always this conversation like, 
Ho, oh, we don't have to talk about no more slave stuff. No more slave stuff. We don't want to yeah. do this. Why is underground important to the narrative about black families and black stories? So a lot of people who say, why another show like this? I say, why ask why? Because it's about American history. It's not even black history. It's American history. It's what built this country. So you have a story about the Gettysburg or, or you know, Vietnam or George, uh, George Washington, but you don't question that. But when it comes to this, you question, have we been, have we been preconditioned to not want to know? And if so, why? Why, are they, have, uh, have, why has our interest in our culture been scrubbed away? And then also, you know, with this, it's a story about, so 1857, it's about Underground Railroad. So it's a story about people who have been enslaved, who are fighting for freedom. This is not about the occupation, it's about the revolution. This is about people fighting for theirs and standing up. So it's not, you know, a story where you're going to consistently see people in, in you know, in proper situations lacking these are people who are fighting for who they are, their value, their worth, and everybody can respond to that. Um, but it's also, you know, it's, it's just so, there's so many things about, I mean, look, people have responded to us. There's a reason we're coming back for a second season because, you know, people who used to be skeptics saw it and were like, oh, we get it. You know what I mean? But um, I hope we just keep, continue to keep doing what we're able to do with it. That's right. Yeah. Thank you so much. Have yeah, a good day. You, you, funny. you remind me of all right, so there you have it. It's a wrap. We are wrapping up the red carpet right now and getting ready to go inside. We had such a great time speaking with the cast of Moonlight, Hidden Figures, Fences, and we got to speak with all our favorite TV show characters as well. Looking forward to Blackish and Orange is the New Black. So make sure you subscribe to our channel, Black Tree TV, to see more of that footage. So we're back. And one thing that really seemed to be a theme with this year's red carpet was politics. A lot of people, they were celebrating, but they had a lot to say about Donald Trump and the Muslim ban and what's going on. Let's check in with our producer, Jamal Finkley, and see what he has to say about it. Jamal, like people, they weren't just focused on the SAG Awards this year. They had a lot to say about politics. And I mean, we know why that is, but talk about that. I mean, well, Hollywood has been very vocal throughout the process, and some people have criticize Hollywood for their political stances against Donald Trump but with that being said uh, I mean the truth about it is if there's a Muslim ban there's no Yara Shahidi on blackish there's a lot, a lot of these great actors Maya Mbalik you know she had a lot to say about it too and uh, has been very vocal so I was I was actually I was actually pleasantly surprised that the actors did have something to say and, and took this this great carpet and took the chance to speak on those topics so that was a, I mean it, it wasn't the, the most exciting part of the day you know it's like kind of a downer for all of us but there was a lot of great fashions and um, I mean let's see what Nicole had to say yes. about the fashion going on. Nicole how amazing was the fashion tonight? girl don't mind if I will spiel on this so my favorite so far you like was, the sparkles you like I was here the for the sparkles Nicole Kidman in that green dress like where'd you get that and why because it gave me like couture, I'm here for it, I won already vibes, and Thandie Newton had on like a very crystallized oh, dress. Her dress was beautiful. Velvet off the shoulder, stunning. Selma Hayek, she had on this like yellow, very celebratory of Latin culture, and just really brought her culture we to the red carpet. The so that was a favorite. Hair was a big thing this year. So we had um, Danielle Brooks from with the faux locks. She had the faux locks and the like little pins up yes. style. Tracy gave us the long braid, the Rapunzel braid for all my naturally sis. Yes. And blue was the color for black men this year. Blue was the color. A lot of black suits, sorry, a lot of blue suits this year on black men. Mahershala had a white suit on and he just looked like milk, <laughs> like milk for a thirsty baby. Amazing, but I'll let Amazing. you wrap up. <laughs> Fashion was amazing. See you guys next year. Yes, let us know what you think.